Hi, this is Kevin Lee. Um, lots of customers are having trouble configuring IBM MQ connection with uh, our Power Exchange for JMS application. So, in this presentation, I will explain how you can create and configure JMS objects within IBM and use them within Informatica. Prerequisites for Informatica. The first thing is, of course, you have to install Power Center, and the next thing is um, IBM Web3 NQ provides the required drivers so that um, JMS client is able to access the queue. So make sure that you provide those jar files, and also you have to provide the MQ binding file for Informatica for any JMS client, which we will cover in this presentation. Okay, WebSphere MQ is a JMS provider. It provides a messaging system that implements the JMS API. You can use the um, IBM GUI uh, named WebSphere MQ Explorer to configure JMS objects that enable communication with between the JMS client and WebSphere MQ. So using WebSphere MQ Explorer, you can create an on, initial on context and also you can create JMS connection factories and destinations. This is the IBM Australia MQ Explorer. I have a queue manager named QM1. Under there I have a queue named Q1. This is the queue that I'm trying to access in this presentation. So under JMS uh, admin objects, you have to create a Azure context by just by right clicking on it. So choose file system. Just provide a direct, uh, directory where uh, JND binding file can be created. Uh, provider URL is this one. So make sure that you provide this provider URL when you create the JNDI connection, uh, application connection later on. Okay, it is done. Now I will create a connection factory and destination. Right click on it, right click on it, click new connection connection factory. Uh, connection factory name is CF1. If you are trying to access a queue, make sure that you choose queue connection factory. Transport mode. Choose binding if the power center server is running on the same machine hosting the MQ server. Otherwise, use MQ client so that you can establish remote connection. So, provide the queue manager name. Um, if the power center server is um, is trying to access the MQ remotely or JMS client is trying to access the MQ, uh, MQ server remotely make sure that you provide the host name not localhost otherwise if, uh, the JMS client will look for the IBM listener on the same localhost same machine so I provide a host name everything else um, you can just left them as default. So that's it. I create a connection factory. Now I will create a connection uh, destination. I named this D1. I make sure that the type is Q. If you're trying to connect the Q, provide a Q manager name and Q that you're trying to access. That's it. So it's done. Now go to Work from Azure and create a application application connection for JNDI and JMS. The first thing, the first one is JNDI. 
Change the context factory. This value is constant. So if you're trying to access web speed MQ, just provide this value. Change the provide URL, which I explained earlier. Just copy and just provide the location where the change the, the binding file is located. The next thing is JMS connection. Just provide a connection factory, whatever you provided. CF41, in my case, the destination is D1. Make sure that destination type is Q if you're trying to access Q. So that's it. Uh, one other thing, one additional thing that I want to talk about is the new feature starting from IBM MQ version 7.1. IBM added new channel authentication feature which gives more control over access granted to a connecting system at the channel level. This feature allows you to define rules about whether certain inbound channels to a queue manager should be allowed or blocked. For this presentation, I will basically remove the channel authentication so any user from any remote machine can access the queue. So for that, just go to IBM WebSphere MQ bin directory and run um, this utility with a queue manager name. In my case, it's QM1. I connect it to the queue uh, manager name. And then remove the channel authentication. To view the current setting, you can just run this command. So it was disabled, you can see that. That's all you have to do. So from any user, from any remote machine can access the queue now. The last thing, the required Java files, they are located under Western MQ Java lib directory. Um, you can go through the IBM documentation and find out which jars are required to establish JMS connection from uh, using JMS client. Uh, otherwise, you can copy every jar file that located under this directory and copy them simply. And then just prompt them into Informatica server in Java lib directory. So you can override it. All right, that's all you have to do in order to establish James connection for IBM MQ. For further information, of course, you can go over our product chain for James user guide. We have a two um, knowledge base article that covers the presentation that we just had. One is how to configure products in for JMS and the channel authentication, how t you can disable it. So those two articles, please go over them. And we have a JMS Connect test tool Informatica, which Informatica provides so you can test the JMS connection outside Informatica so that you can see whether the connection can be established or not outside of America. Okay, that's about it for power exchange for JMS. So that's how you can connect uh, JMS connection for IBM Webspring MQ. So if you have any further questions, please let us know. Thank you.